Hello everyone, this is Richard here. Just another update on the testing of the Big Box 3D printer. Um, this last week I've been really tracking down the last of the mechanical issues that I've had with the machine. Um, and really they've sort of uh, been down to the way that I've been using the machine, how I've got it set up. So I can't really criticise the design itself, although I have had a few thoughts on some ideas I would possibly change but my main issue really was this bar at the back and um, on the y-axis you've got this back motor here that drives this bar and two rods at the end two pulleys at the end so we have basically got a bar with the motor drive in the middle and a bearing and a pulley which is being uh, um, stretched across to the front so these pulleys at the side on here uh, with the tensioners at the front which I had a few issues with but the, the team have changed the design slightly now so you shouldn't have any more issues with the, the tensioners. Okay so the problem I was having was really there was the last source of noise for the machine vibrations and a little bit just over stressing of, of the whole mechanical system and that was mainly down to the fact that I had the tensioners pretty tight and that goes back to the fact that I, I like to tighten things so they make a nice twang basically and uh, it sort of dawned on me uh, over a period of time that uh, I probably had these a little bit too tight. What, what it was actually doing was uh, basically just almost flexing, well actually flexing these rods and because it's only supported with one bearing and um, the, the pull is on the outside of the rod, there's not a bearing on the other side which you could argue may be a good idea but not necessarily needed, but it would be belt and braces for the design since the designs are in like this. So pulling on this was really causing a lot of, a lot of friction, a lot of stress and a lot of warping and bending of this, of this um, uh, eight mil ground rod. And I think I just really had them a little bit, a little bit done a bit too tight. So what I've done now is just tension them off a little bit and they sound like this now. So this is the lower one. And this is the top one, nice and sort of flappy. So I would normally have had them quite a bit tighter than that, um, but actually that's really, really helped the whole print reliability, um, even a bit quality of printing and reducing the last bit of vibrations and noise I was having in the printer. So I'm really delighted with that now. And now I've just sort of calmed that down, that tension down, that's sorted that out. Okay, so that's that was the main sort of issue I had. Uh, a couple of other things I've removed the, um, uh, springs from the bed. They had some little little springs and some spacers, some little acrylic spacers that I've removed and put solid posts in. I prefer a nice solid fixed bed. I don't really um, see the need for uh, springs on a bed so I, I don't have them on any of my other printers so I've removed those. Um, and the, the sort of the good thing about that is, is it's really increased uh, reliability in this whole machine now. So I've been getting, I had quite a lot of failures because I was pushing the machine really hard, speed, print speeds, acceleration speeds and general travel speeds and pushing it a little bit past its limit. So I was, I've got a nice big bag of failures as you always get, as you always get with 3D printing. Um, some really cracking ones in there which uh, I'll put some close-up shots of. But slowly and surely I've been really refining this machine down to working very very well and producing really good quality prints so now I'm getting really beautiful beautiful z-axis and really nice high speed uh, printing as well as good travel speeds and some of that is down to the fact that I've also changed the drivers which is um, the next thing I was going to go on to so on the electronics uh, I've had a little look and changed the drivers from the A4988 which were fitted which are these little ones to the Text Instruments DRV 8825s which I've only used once before and I've got them in one other machine and they're fine I use them quite quite a bit in that one machine and I haven't had a need to change back in this one because it's got the rumble board in uh, I decided to try it first of all on the 16 times micro stepping because that's the same as the 4988s and really that uh, that was that was quite good it reduced the noise of the, the the machine a little bit and also allowed me to up the currents whereas I had to to wind the currents back on these um, uh, 4988 uh, and that was one of the problems where I couldn't get maximum travel speeds so I've been quite happy with putting in the Texan Instruments 
uh, DRV 8825s because it's allowed me to put a little bit more current at the back here which is a big motor so it can handle it and uh, my currents wrote them down so I wouldn't forget so I've got um, 0.68 volts on the X axis uh, 0.8 volts on the Y axis and 0.5 volts on the Z. You basically times that by two and that gives you the amount of current. So on the Z I've got one amp, um, on the Y 1.6 and on the X which is the one over here uh, so about 1.3, uh, 1.4 amps. So it's a little bit more than you would normally put on a setup like this but the motors can handle it and it enables you to get some good acceleration speeds and some better um, uh, travel travel speeds as well. So now I've got this printing at the same travel speeds I've got on my other printers which is over 150 millimeters a second which is really nice. So I think now I'm really quite happy with the way it's working. Okay so there's that. Um, I then moved to changing to uh, 32 times micro stepping and that was quite interesting because uh, it didn't make as much difference as, uh, as I would hoped and I think we're down to probably the fact that it's achieving the quality of printing and the speed and everything else that it's going to do uh, uh, for this setup which is very 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 good I'm really delighted with the, the print quality now it's as good as my other machines now I finally got it tuned and, and, and dialed in to exactly how I want it the 32 micro stepping is, is causing a few issues because I actually left it to print for about four or five hours and came back and it had um, a thermal runaway situation which is a new sort of feature in Marlin to allow you to monitor if your heated bed or your uh, nozzle is getting over the temperature it should be and thermally running away effectively going out of control. What I'm confused about is I don't believe it actually had a thermal runaway condition. I think it was probably the Marlin firmware either running out of interrupt time, interrupt speed or something else going on. But it's only happened, it's happened twice when I've had the uh, DR the 8825s running at 32 micro steps and it's happened about halfway through a, a, a five hour print or so. So it's been a bit annoying and they've just come, it's just come back and the machine's completely frozen and on the LCD screen it says thermal runaway. Uh, I haven't got any more details on that, I'm going to look into it. I've been using the firmware as supplied so my next step is really just to go back to a blank version of Marlin and do my own settings so I know what's all in there and I know how it's compiled and everything else. So I've only just been changing um, the, 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 the normal settings uh, that you do in, in Marlin to sort of tweak this machine as it, as it came to me really. But now I think just to understand that problem a little bit more and see whether there is an issue either with the electronics or something else or some noise, uh, that's what I'm going to do next. Okay, so the next thing, um, while I was looking at that, I was also investigating how the wiring was set up because it's got very nice cable cable wiring and um, it's something I've already talked to the guys at the uh, big box about and the E3D team about how, how it's a good idea to wire these things up in certain ways and group the cables of wiring and twist the cables. So I had a quick look at this machine I noticed that actually it wasn't done um, how, I would, how I would do it. So I've taken a lot of the stepper motor wiring off and the, the uh, and really rerouted the wiring inside and and twisted uh, the pairing of the motor cables, which is can be quite a useful thing to do. It's very um, it's very helpful for electrical noise and um, not picking up uh, noise on the rest of the parts of the circuit. So you basically just twist your red and blue coils together and your green and black coils together in quite a reasonably uh, tight. Uh, tight twist and then just uh, twist those two together just very loosely and then you can bring them back down. Some of these cable looms in this machine are quite long so we've actually got a really quite long both um, X and Y axis uh, cable looms and we've got two separate drivers for the each one of the Z which is nice but um, but again it's just two lots of cablings that are sat there um, just flapping around and acting as aerials really. So. I've tidied that all up, I'll do some close-up shots so you can see what, uh, what I'm talking about there and um, that's made again a big difference. Reliable, I haven't had a single print failure at all for any reason um, for probably the last four or five days and I've been printing some really cool stuff. We've got these ones and some really chunky, big, complicated parts taking some quite some time. Um, some of these that all fit together which are really nice parts and this one especially was 
quite an interesting one because it was printed at this sort of angle, so a large overhangs, all sorts of issues there. Uh, did a few prints in ABS, printed one of Louise Drigger's Dragons, so that's really nice, that's been printed in ABS. Um, and a few people asked me to print some test cubes and things. I've done a few of these, I'll do some close-up shots, but really they're, they didn't show up any real major signs. Um, I'm not a huge fan of these uh, these little, little tiny ones, I don't think they show up issues all that well. Uh, they're very small, you can't get up to travel speeds, accelerations and decelerations on these sort of things, so you don't, you don't tend to catch all the issues. But I didn't have any issues, I printed those in ABS, I've got another black one around here somewhere. Um, and a gold one here in PLA. So I've printed quite a few of these. Um, so what else? We've got uh, plenty of good, plenty of good prints now. Uh, wiring's now sorted, and really this machine is is in a position where I'm really really delighted with it. So I think by the time that you get hold of one of these, hopefully in December, if the team can deliver everything on time as the Kickstarter, you're going to be really really happy with the with this machine. There's not a lot more other than investigating the uh, thermal runaway issue and the, and the 32 times micro stepping issue on the DRV8825s. I'm going to look into that a little bit more and just find out a little bit more about what's going on there um, and see whether the, whether I can get any better quality resolution out of it. <clears throat> that said, it is really, really doing very well. I'm really delighted with the, the speed, performance and the quality of all the prints I'm getting out of this now. So it's, it's at least matching all of my other machines that I've spent a long time setting up and um, some of them are uh, more substantially built than, than this machine as well. So that's a really, really good sign. Uh, I've got the bed um, set up because I've just cleaned it, just taken everything off of it and cleaned it. So the glass is all ready to go because I'm going to put on some Wolfbite Nano and this is quite an interesting surface treatment. Uh, I've been using the Wolfbite normal wolf bite which is the ABS version on another machine for some time now and uh, I got these from Hawk 3D Proto thank you very much uh, and the wolf bite for the ABS is really fantastic um, I've only been using it on a printer about 150 by 150 print size on glass uh, but it's just absolutely amazing for, for ABS so I'm I'm gonna I've tried it on a small portion on here with ABS and it's fine I'm gonna try it on a bigger bigger ABS prints as well but first of all I'm going to try out the Wolfbite Nano which is the PLA version again I've tried that on one of my other machines I've been using it fine I just wanted to try it on the full maximum full print size of this bed to get some really huge prints using hopefully the whole volume of the big box 3D printer so I'll let you know how I get on with that uh, but it is really nice surface coating uh, for your heated print bed um, and I think they also now have just introduced a Wolfbite um, I think it's called Mega, can't remember, but it's a PC ABS, so it's polycarbonate ABS. That's really interesting because uh, um, E3D sell a really nice PC ABS uh, filament, which is really, really good to print with. It's absolutely phenomenal. So if I could print with that all the time for everything, I probably would. It's really, really nice. It's one of the nicest, well, it's better than, than any of ABS I've ever used, and it's a damn sight easier to print than polycarbonate on its own. So PC ABS uh, is probably a really good material to, to be able to print, uh, especially mechanical parts from. Still a bit size limiting, but you can get some amazingly good strong prints out of it. So that's my update for the moment. I will come back and give you a little bit more, but I'm really reaching towards being very satisfied with the printer. I've got it tuned and set up just as, just as I want, and it's not particularly that difficult. I'm starting to explore a lot more of the um, the settings uh, for different uh, print materials now and that's going to be quite an interesting exploration and then I'll be trying to fit a few more different um, uh, nozzles and extruders onto here as well so I can print some some different types maybe the um, the volcano and uh, cyclops and those sort of ones as well so That'll be probably up a little bit later on. First of all, I'm going to try and track down this issue that I've got with the drivers, 32 times micro steppings, see whether I can get to the bottom of that. Um, okay, so I'll see you next time. Thanks ever so much for watching. Hope that was helpful.